The Bible states that God made human beings in his image. Well, I am a human being, so therefore I am made in God's image. But what does that mean, to be made in God's image? Do I look like God? Does that mean that I am God? No, we're not God. So what does it mean to be made in the image of God? Well, we need a conversation about image bearing. Let's talk. Hey, welcome to Teb Talk. My name is Dr. Tracy Barnes. And again, I'm so glad you've joined me in this episode. What did God mean when he declared, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness? What did he mean by that, that God made you and me in his image? What is the image of God? Well, I can tell you this, whatever that image is, it is unique to humankind and not shared with any part of God's creation. That is obvious. Well, if you're like me, you've probably heard a word or two about what it means to be made in the image of God. Some would say that to be made in God's image is to be intelligent, or the ability to reason, or to communicate, or to choose freely. Others would add emotions or self-awareness. Some would add conscience and the ability to commune with God. Well, all of these abilities sound reasonable, but they're really not. You see, Animals have some of these abilities. Yes, in limited capacity, they're not on the same level as you and I as human beings, but they still have some of these abilities. For instance, animals are intelligent. They do have emotions they feel, and they can choose freely, and they do communicate. But here's what's even more important, and this really matters. Image bearing cannot be ability-based because the fertilized egg created at human conception has no ability, though it is fully human. So I ask again, what does it mean for humankind to be made in the image of God? Well, to understand this theological concept, we must get away from the idea of defining image bearing as an ability. We need to start seeing it as a status. We should define image bearing this way. Image bearing is about representing God, acting on God's behalf at his behest. As human beings, we are God's representatives on earth. We image God among his creation. This is what God meant when he said, let us make humankind in our image in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky and over the livestock and all the wild animals, over all the creatures that move along the ground. From the very beginning, God created his own imagers, male and female, he created them. They were designed to carry out God's will on earth, acting as his representatives. His desire, and this is very important, you need to understand this, was to live among them and for them to rule and reign with him. God could have taken care of the world that he created by himself because after all, he is God. But he created an earthly family and his children would assume the role of managing and maintaining his creation. Image bearing, it was a status a position. It was not a particular set of abilities. Humans were created to be co-workers, working with God, sharing his attributes. They were told to multiply, thus creating more imagers, filling the earth with God's representatives. Let me quote from Dr. Michael Heiser, an Old Testament scholar who I believe captures this theological truth very well, this theological truth of image bearing, when he writes, Imagers function in God's place, not because God needs a break or is incapable, but because God decreed the role. 
humans were tasked to make the whole world like Eden, a place where God's goodness was known and his presence experienced, where humanity's needs were met and God's created world could be fully known and enjoyed, where imagers related to each other the way God related to them with joy and love. Imaging God is a compelling theological truth for a couple of reasons. Here's the first. Imaging God gives you and me a secure identity. God has created us. He has made us to work together with him. In other words, he's designed us to partner with him. This is how God looks at us. We are made in his image. We should look at each other in the very same way. For every human being, and I don't care who they are or where you find them, they are all made in the image of God, and they all have the same status as image bearers. But also, imaging God gives you and me a defined purpose. We have a mission. Every person, again, regardless of how gifted or not gifted they are, plays a role in someone else's life. We need each other. Imagine the world, just think for a moment, if everyone understood what imaging was all about, image bearing. There would be no racism. There would be no hatred or violence toward one another. We wouldn't try to manipulate or dominate one another. This type of behavior was never ever God's intention. It is the result of rebellion and sin. From the very beginning, human beings are unique among God's creation. They matter, and their relationship with God matters. This is one of the reasons why the gospel matters today, because God the Son, Jesus, makes it possible for all humanity to once again have a relationship with God, a relationship that was fractured so long ago, but now is being restored through the death and resurrection of Jesus and allowing all of humanity to once again participate with God as his partners in this world. But I want you to notice something before we move on with this subject of image bearing. God said, let us make man in our image. Let me say that again. Let us make humankind in our image. Note the plural language. Let us make humankind in our image. Who are the us that God is speaking of here? Who are these others? Well, most often you will hear people say, this is a reference to the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But this language is not a veiled reference to the Trinity. Let me say that again. This language is not a veiled reference to the Trinity. If God were speaking to the members of the Trinity, they would already know his mind because they're co-equal and co-eternal. They are one in three and three in one. God would not need to tell them because they would already know. No, God is speaking to someone else. God is speaking to the heavenly host, members of his heavenly family. God is connecting the members of the heavenly host with this important theological truth, imaging God. Remember, image bearing is representing God acting on God's behest. You need to understand that God created two families, both of which image God. Humans image God on earth, and the heavenly host image God in the heavenlies. That is, humans are imaging God on that which is visible, and the heavenly host are imaging God on that which is invisible. Before God created Adam and Eve, he had already created other intelligent beings. The Bible calls them the sons of God. We call them angels. It was the sons of God who watched as God laid the foundations of the earth. In Job 38, God answers Job when we read, Where were you, Job, 
when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. God has both a supernatural and a natural family, and they both image God. This supernatural family, the sons of God, well, that's another topic for a future TED Talk. We'll explore this. But for now, let's wrap this particular talk on image bearing up. As human beings, you and I are made in the image of God, meaning that we are His image bearers. Image bearing is not about abilities. It is about status. Always remember, image bearing is about representing God, acting on God at His behest. Well, hey, listen, thanks for watching TED Talk. So glad you've joined me. And if you found this to be helpful, again, I would love for you to hit that like button. And again, if you've not become a subscriber, press that subscription button. I'd love for you to join us and be a part of all that God is doing. And as always, God's very best to you.